infographic content. <laughs> I'll have a look on look just now on the corner this week if you want to see how I created this look, you watch it. It's over to VoiceOver Electric because pretty soon I'm not going to be able to speak. This calls for a lot of liquid latex so I'm going in with a heavy moisturiser to make sure my skin's protected. Getting to work on the mouth prosthetic, I'm applying liquid latex in a circle around my mouth, around my cheeks and then I'm pushing cotton wool on top of it. Once you've got that cotton wool pushed into the first layer of liquid latex, you want to make sure you get it covered with more latex as quick as possible because it becomes much easier to work with when it's saturated. I repeat this process a couple of times with the latex and cotton to push the mouth out from the face and give it depth. When I get to the sides of my nose, I'm making the cotton and latex slightly thicker to hide my nose into my face and mask it not being there. I might look like a psychopathic mall centre that's had a mental breakdown, but keep building up the cotton wool donut. Once that's all completely saturated, I'm taking a little bit more liquid latex around the edges to blend it into the face. I'm then going in with more liquid latex and cotton and starting to mask in the tip of my nose into the prosthetic. I'm using less cotton here as I've already got the high point from the tip of my nose but I'm making sure to blend it into the sides of the areas that we've applied earlier and to make it all look as if it's a seamless circle around my mouth. Now on to the fun and freaky part, teeth. To form these teeth I use Fimeo White Air Dry Modeling Clay and I just took a small ball of it and rolled it out into a worm shape as you do like in play school. But I made sure to put the pressure onto one end to make it into more of a triangly pointy shape. Tap down one end of the tooth onto the surface to make it flat so it could stick to the face. And then the pointed end I curved around ever so slightly to make it look more like a fang. I would have applied these with spirit gum but I couldn't get it open. So I went in and applied it with liquid latex instead. Applying them with just latex does have a few problems but I'm making sure to hold the tooth there so it has time to set. And I'm then going in with some more cotton wool and latex around the tooth to add some more stability and structure to it so that it sticks upright on the face. If you follow me on social media for a while, you'll know that I created this look last year for Halloween. But back then I didn't go all out as I am doing now because I was worried I wouldn't get into clubs because I don't look like my ID anyway. And this just makes it even worse. After I've applied the reinforcement around the teeth, I'm pushing them onto the face and here's where I do a little fuck up. Do not get liquid latex onto your clothes if you're wearing something nice because that shit's going to stay there and it's never going to come off. Now I'm going in with slightly smaller teeth from the first ones we applied and I'm pushing the first one onto the tip of my nose. This is the most important tooth out of all of them because it blurs the lines of people seeing where the real nose is once the looks completed. After that one's applied I'm going in with the same smaller sized teeth in between all of the larger teeth we first applied so they alternate from large to small. If you haven't noticed the hate gram yet I haven't got my nails on. Moment of silence please but there's good reason for that. When the teeth begin to get slightly crowded, it becomes difficult to apply the structure of the cotton wall around them to keep them upright in the face. So, to just rectify that problem, I'm using a bridle for which I have when I'm making my bow ties. You don't have to use a bridle for this, you can use anything which has got a point to it, just to help push the cotton in around the teeth, so that you can then apply the latex over the top, so the teeth have some stability and structure to stay upright. I wanted to creatively invest in this look, and my nails would have just got in the way of all those fiddly little teeth, so if anybody's clocked the no nails, that's why. And again, there's a fuck up with the liquid latex, so it's time for a quick strip and a costume change to stop it from getting anywhere else. It's then on to the second inner circle of teeth, and this is when the bridle comes in really handy, because it can get really fiddly trying to work around those outer layer of teeth. It just takes a little bit of patience, but I'm going in and applying another circle of those smaller teeth around my mouth. If you were recreating this look and you wanted any chance of drinking or talking throughout the night of wearing it, this is a point where you'd skip and stop, because once you've applied the stabilizing layer of latex and cotton around those inner layer of teeth, you're only going to be able to do a few murmurs or mumbles and grunts. But it looks more effective and freaky to have them there, and I don't want to be talking to anybody anyway, so yes, bitch. Once the teeth are all in place and you've got them all stabilized, that's the mouth finished, and it's on to making the skin look textured and all like you've been in the sun for too long sunbathing. To achieve this wrinkly cracked skin, I'm changing up the cotton wall over to toilet paper. I'm applying that tissue and latex around the sides of the mouth that we formed to make it cohesive that it's actually part of the skin pushing out from the face. And from that point, I'm working out to go all around my face with tissue paper and latex, making sure to pucker and fold the tissue as I lay it down onto the latex so it gives wrinkles and textures to the skin. If you have eyebrows, I'd recommend covering them up before you go around the forehead or anywhere near your eyebrows with the latex because the latex could rip the hairs out, but as you see, I don't have to worry about that. After I've got the tissue paper and latex laid down all over my face, I'm using some of the little bits of latex that have dried and I'm pulling them across the skin to make weird kind of like tendons. Now I've got a mask of latex and shit all over my face and it's time to let that dry, then set it and go in with colour. 
I let all the latex and tissue sit for about 20 minutes, but you can use a hairdryer to speed up the drying process. After it had dried, I then went in with Ben Nye Translucent Set Powder, and I puffed that all over the skin to make sure that it wasn't tacky anymore. To colour the skin, I'm going in with several different pan sticks and cream foundations in a few different colours to add all those skin tones back in so that we don't look ghostly stark white. I'm working with each one of those colours and stippling them over the face, blending them out as I go. And then I'm going in with a darker foundation shade, and I'm using that to kind of, kind of contour. I know this is a weird, worm, monster-like creature, but highlight and contour applies to everything. It's not just for beauty makeup. I'm contouring around the sides of the mouth to pop it out from the skin even further and accentuate it looking like it's really pushing out. I'm also contouring around the sides of the face to make the face look a little bit slimmer and I'm stippling that same contour colour and foundation shades down my neck and onto my chest because I want to make this area kind of look muddy and grimy. Yeah, I'm just making dots all over those areas and slightly blending them together, not blending them and buffing them out too much because you don't want to blur them and mix them all into one colour. I'm then going around my hairline with the black face paint and I'm also taking that down the sides of my neck. I should have probably coloured my ears with this colour as well, but removing it afterwards is a pain so I didn't do it for the sake of the tutorial. I'm darkening that up closer to the hairline because it will make it look more effective when we apply the husk kind of thing that you saw at the start of the video. I'm dotting some of that same black face paint around my face to add some like grime dirty areas. And I'm bringing the hair band down because that's what we're going to be using to make the husk darker inside. I'm also applying some of that black face paint into the centre of the mouth to make it look like hollow, that's where the hole would be into the centre of the mouth. And I'm applying some of the black face paint around the sides of the teeth and around the edge of where the lips kind of would be of the mouth. I'm then going in with some red face paint and I'm applying this all inside the areas of the mouth which would be the inside of the mouth. I'm making sure to try and not get this on the teeth but it is kind of impossible because they are sticking right out and in the way. But it doesn't matter if you get some on there because it will look a bit gory anyway and it all adds to the effect. I'm then going in with some more of that black face paint and I'm darkening up in between and around the teeth to add more depth and definition to how they'd sink into the face. That's all of the red done in the mouth and that's pretty much the entire prosthetic done. Now it's onto the eyes. I'm just using that same brush that I used to apply all those colours on my mouth around the eyes. Sometimes a dirty brush is the best colour to use so that's what I'm using here to make muddy kind of circles around the eyes. That sludgy brown colour is just a base and then I'm going over the top of it with a liquid foundation. I'm doing this because I want to add the depth that there's dark circles around the eyes but I don't want it to look like you're a raccoon with these dark black circles. I want it to look like they're there but there's depth and they're actually in part of the skin. I'm taking a little bit more of red face paint mixed with a bit of black and I'm making squiggly lines out from the side of the mouth to add stretch marks. I'm now taking some red alcohol activated paints and you want to be careful when you're applying these around the eyes but I am applying them to latex so it is okay. Just be careful not to get the alcohol on your eyes because it will burn. I'm applying that around parts of the prosthetic to add kind of like colour and warmth to the skin like it's alive because we do kind of look a little bit flat with it all just being one kind of colour with skin tones and black. So you want to add some like warmth and life back into the skin. So I'm using some alcohol activated paints and I'm lightly putting that over areas, kind of in areas where you want to add some more depth and contour. Alcohol activated paints are perfect for making skin tone look more alive because you can tap them out and blend them into the skin so they look like they're part of it and like it's actually real skin. I'm now applying a dark reddy brown face paint and I'm using that to carve in a new jawline because if this mouse was pushing out from the face the features would look absolutely ridiculous so I'm just using that to carve in a new jaw structure. Now it's just a case of going in with some different coloured eyeshadows and making a little bit more depth and buffing everything in and blending it into the skin. That's the prosthetic and the base colour is all complete so it's time to dance like an alien worm and show off your new plastic surgery. I felt that the eyes looked a little bit plain which would be perfect for this alien worm's daytime look but she's going out for a night on the town so I wanted to add some black smudged eyeliner all around the eyes because she knows she's perfect at makeup. We don't know her gender identity but we won't tell he slash she how she feels inside. Or he. Now despite having all that strange stuff on the face, this is probably the strangest part of the tutorial, mascara. She hasn't got a clue what that is, but we're going to apply it anyway. I'm just smudging this all around the eyes, there's no really method or reason to this, you just want to coat the lashes with dark mascara so that they're black and they blend into the rest of the face. Now for the part of the tutorial which I'm going to call the husk. And this does trigger me ever so slightly because I am kind of trypophobic. I don't like these weird kind of lotus seed pattern things. They freak me the fuck out. But I'm using an old wig cap and I'm ripping holes into it. I've pulled that black bandana that I was wearing up over my head and I've opened it up so that it's black underneath so I don't have to actually paint my hair. And I'm painting over the top of that wig cap with some brown eyeshadow and black face paint around the perimeter to blend it in to look like it's actually part of the creature's body. And I'm making these holes in this old wig cap to make kind of like weird areas where they'd pretty probably like, I don't want to say this, but eggs from the worm or weird kind of things like that. I wanted the head to look like a weird husk shell-like thing. And for the crowning glory, fake blood. 
I'm going to apply this all around the mouth area to look like the creature just devoured something. And then I'm going to use the remaining product that's on the sides of the paddle of the brush. And I'm just going to kind of like rub that all around the face to make some blood splatters. You could use one of those like long kind of brushes and flick blood splatters all over the face. But I wanted to try and keep this as clean as possible because I was doing this at like 6 o'clock in the morning. And I didn't want to have to clean up the floor as well as myself. And now the look is complete and it's time for me to fill the fantasy as a weird alien worm-like creature. And then not so much a fantasy after I've taken the photos of trying to get this off my face. Mm. Ow. Ow. Let's see if we can get it off like my face. Ah. Oh. If you want to see sneak peeks of me getting in transformations and you want to see the behind the scenes footage, follow me along on my Snapchat, the links will be in the description below. Please give the video a thumbs up because it really helps me out and subscribe if you haven't already and until next time, bye bye. If you're still here, I don't know what you're doing, but leave a skull emoji in the comments below if you are. Thanks for watching, and bye bye, again.